Hi everyone, my name is Tanya, and welcome to my new series, The Most Interesting People on My Timeline. This series is an ever-evolving multimedia archive of those who have crossed my path and caught my attention, both online and in real life. Some of the people that I interview I've had the privilege of knowing for years, some of them I've only had fleeting moments of admiring them online, but no matter the level of interaction, their work has stopped me in my tracks and made me say I need to tell absolutely everybody I know about this. So as this is the first episode, this structure is something that I'm still playing around with. It's the structure that I have figured out to convey what I want the best in the best way. So I this commentary that you're hearing right now, it will be intercut with um, clips of the actual interview that I did with people and this is just so that i can provide a little bit more of context and a little bit more commentary on how the work like i saw the work and i found the work and i interacted with it um, and with the person but then also get uh, moments of them speaking about themselves in their own words and about their work in their own words so if you're on youtube you're watching this you're gonna be able to see the clips that i'm talking about you're gonna be able to um, find all the links in the description box if you're listening to this on some sort of um audio platform like spotify or apple music wherever you listen to podcasts you can still see and interact with everything all the audio visual materials um, and all links will be in my website on different pages for each episode however to find the main page for this series just go to tanyadoes.com forward slash interesting people i really hope that y'all can interact with the work and y'all find these people as interesting as i do and i feel very grateful and fortunate to have spoken to everybody so let me know what y'all think about this structure what works what doesn't hopefully i think that this is the best way that it will work and the way that i want to present it um but of course I will need to iron some things out as we go along. So let me know. And thank you to Hamas for being the first person um, for this series. Without further ado, this is episode one of the most interesting people on my timeline. Let me introduce you to Hamas Garavito. Ser gay es una bendición. Ser gay es una bendición. Ser gay es una bendición. Es expresión. Libertad. Felicidad. Se trate de hacer decisiones por sí mismo. Ser uno mismo. Es poder escoger lo que es bueno y lo que es malo. Ser gay es despertar. De abrir los ojos a cómo la supremacía blanca y el capitalismo ha impregnado muchas prácticas de la religión. ¿Por qué no puede ser así, ser gay? Thomas Garavito is a queer first gen Colombian American visual artist from Dover, New Jersey, who recently graduated from Harvard, studied neuroscience and art film and visual studies. And of course, I met Hamas through school. And we were we had some mutual friends. We were doing some of the same clubs. Shout out to Act on a Dream and also shout out to that retreat we went to in Cape Cod where Hamas and I just quoted the Disney Channel passed the play French dialogue to each other as we were cooking. Yeah. We also need zucchini. I love zucchini. That was chef's kiss. Anyway, so we had these mutual friends. We did these clubs. But I really was able to interact with Hamas and their work on Instagram where they were posting uh, updates about their work. So here's a bit more about Hamas from Hamas themselves. My name is Hamas Garavito. I am Colombian American, first generation American. I am queer. I am a visual artist. I recently graduated, first person in my family to graduate in the United States from college and have navigated a lot of these experiences on my own, figuring out what it is that I want to do with my life, what I'm interested in, what motivates me. Now that I'm done with college and I've figured out a little bit about what I want to do. I'm just really glad that I've been able to choose something that I love to do and hoping to keep practicing it and pre keep practicing my skills in um, visual art, whether through film or through installation work or just any type of visual stuff I'm really interested in. I love pop culture. I, I think for many people, um, including myself, like it is an introduction to 
queerness and I'm interested in that. And also a little bit about um, my upbringing. I was raised in this church that is Christian and it was kind of those, one of those institutions where like you're very socially isolated. So I was very socially isolated as a kid, could only interact with people in the church, couldn't consume pop culture, couldn't um, look, uh, see movies, uh, listen to music, did my social uh, skills development. I guess that's what led me to study neuroscience in, in college as my concentration. Also because like I originally was um, uh, intending to be pre-med, but I realized that, and what I've explored in my work now is the American dream and like existing for profit and like thinking about how can I challenge that through the work that I do. I wanna do something that can uh, inspire people, um, help people, help communities and myself included heal through these experiences of intergenerational religious trauma and just doing it out of love. And I'm also interested in healing these wounds, both in community and in myself. I was born on a, a Mercury retrograde, which means oh I have, <laughs> I sometimes have trouble communicating. So um, yeah, fun fact. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting that Hamas brought up not being very good at communicating like, as a person, because through their work, I think that they conveyed everything that they were trying to convey. They conveyed these really interesting feelings about home, about healing, about having fun, being yourself while you're figuring yourself out. So I just thought that was very interesting. And I don't know, being born in Mercury retrograde made you bad at communication. All I know is I was born on a Wednesday and Wednesday's children are full of woe. The four works that I saw from Hamas are all on Hamas's Vimeo account um, and they're all um, their video work. So I watched Dover, I watched Adela, A Portrait of My Mother, I watched Galaxy Boy, and American Dream slash Sergei Es Una Bendición. And with Dover, I thought it was just a really beautiful uh, collage about their hometown in New Jersey. And they incorporated these snippets of current events world events and how they related to dover and visually i thought it was really interesting and i call it a collage because they inter like they superimposed these clips and different video clips um into the wider video which if y'all I'll, I'll put it up so y'all can see but anyways this style of doing and editing video translated throughout their work and i also talk um with hamas uh specifically about being quindiano which is um people who are from the quindio district in colombia um some of the things that like came up recently like were the articles in a lot of like colombian newspapers talking about you being uh quindiano so like what does that mean in general but also to you absolutely so i mean i've i've had a uh, a really like i guess unique relationship to Colombia because um, I was not born there. I was born here, but um, my family always tried to like relay that culture to me, specifically my mom. As I was growing up, my parents were undocumented. So I was only able to first travel to Colombia when I was about five years old, when my parents um, obtained residency. And I remember, I just have a very vivid um, memory of connecting so deeply with the environment, the, the family, uh, the food, um, and um, yeah, just a lot of love and belonging was felt. And so I've always held that with me throughout my life. I guess that's something that I want to reconnect with in this part of my life now. At the same time, like I want to connect with my family back there and just relay the, what I have learned and also like learn from them, like honor their generational wisdom, but at the same time, like recognize that there are certain wounds that still exist. But yeah, I guess my relationship to Quindío is just like, I have a very fond memory of going there for the first time and feeling very at home and just a, a, a specific feeling that I feel like I can't put any words to um, in a way that I haven't felt here in the US for many reasons. With the articles that you've mentioned, I have felt very supported by people in Colombia who have heard about my work and who are excited to support me. And I am also excited to support them and just to really be there to serve the community. That was one thing that I was a little thrown off by in one of the articles. 
There was one article by La Cronica, the person who interviewed me, Alejandra Olave. She was very lovely, very liberal, very, very sweet. And she included so much in the article that I said, or like everything that I said in the article about my upbringing with religion and me taking down the church that I was raised in that started in Colombia. And the original title of the article was like, Graduado de Harvard va a ser un documental para la comunidad. And I guess their bosses changed the article title to say that a sus 21 años uh, gra grabará un documental para la Universidad de Harvard. And for me, that was just like a stab in the heart <laughs> because it really just uh, disregards the purpose of this project that I'm um, trying to work on. And it, I don't know, it was just really interesting to see how, interesting to see how media can, it was just, it was something that made me a little sad and that was unfortunate, but speaking with Alejandra and also the artists that I've been in contact with in Colombia who are um, ready to collaborate with me once I go there, they just have reaffirmed that like once this work or works that whatever comes about from this um, experience there will speak for itself and the intention is for it to be something that brings people together rather than for it to be owned by this institution. That, that's another, th I guess like another thing that I have been a little, uh, I've just been thinking about just how like tied my identity is now to the school that I went to. And I'm just, I don't know, just something that I'm aware of now. And um, again, with Kindil, my grandpa, um, Herman Guzman, is one of the first, I think, I think he's the first or one of the first loteros in Quindío, in Armenia. Um, so he sells lottery and he's uh, been selling lottery for his whole life. He's 86 now. He is the person that I am excited to connect with the most because I'm just so inspired by his willingness to accept my identity. I'm just really inspired by his love for me and his desire to get to know me better and just his his role in the community everyone in Armenia knows him like I said I want to honor and and, and preserve this generational wisdom that he has and as something that I have not experienced like I have not grown up with elders in my life so I feel like that's something too that it will be interesting to explore in Adela a portrait of my mother uh, Hamas gives us a very casual very intimate look at the relationship with their mother and their mother just as a person if you watch the film, there's a lot of like Harvard stickers and Harvard on everything, obviously because their mother's very proud of that. So not everyone that I'm interviewing, I met through Harvard or is from Harvard, but the people that are, I feel like have um, really complicated relationships with that, like I do and something I'm figuring out. So of course, I'm going to ask um, them about it and how they're, they're dealing with it post-grad. So uh, I talked to Hamas a little bit about being in a space where your your parents are really, really proud of this and it's something that is in your work um, and while also balancing what you know about the institution. Your mom is obviously like in a lot of, of your work and like I saw kind of like my dad's the same where they'll have like everything, mm -hmm. Harvard on everything and they're yes. like so much about it. <laughs> And but then you, you know, like you don't want all of your work to be tied to that, but like it will inherently be sometimes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how do you balance that with like your mom, like your mom having so much pride in it, but you also knowing, you know, what like really goes on like within that space. To a certain extent, like there is something like we have to honor that pride that our parents have because it's some, it's something that I know. Just thinking in the context of my mom, like. She has cleaned houses in the U.S. for many years, over 20 years, and has been overlooked many times, like uh, exploited by this religious institution that I mentioned. And also just like her body has been used by uh, the people who employ her. From her point of view, I can see how beautiful and like kind of like a, a, a goal accomplished it, it might be um, for her to have a child who goes on to go to college and uh, for that college to be Harvard at the same time like something that I've been practicing with her is like uh, after attending Harvard and, and hearing about the atrocities that that go goes on there and what they uh, support and the history just relaying that information again to her and letting her know about all of the weight the weight that um, or like the stuff that Harvard, the name Harvard carries, I think 
relaying that information to her and reminding her that it's important to be critical of these institutions is really nice. So it's kind of, I think maybe there's like a balance there. And I guess that's something that I am trying to practice more and want to uh, really learn during this time is just like, how can we honor these experiences and these desires and, and accomplishments at the same time, uh, and also at the same time being critical of the establishments that have provided these experiences. And once again, with like generational wisdom, like how can we honor generational wisdom? And then in this case, generational experiences, like at the same time, like for there to be an exchange of information so that we can carry them along with us and for them to know the realities of the world, the realities of this institution. Probably my favorite film that Hamas made was called Galaxy Boy. That work, it starts off with this vlog that, or like video that they made on iMovie for a sixth grade project. Hello, I am James and I am an 11 year old from Colombia. And they incorporated it with updated footage and of who they are now and it was just so interesting to see them play with the chronology of video and the fact that they even still have this video from like like I don't know how many years ago and to be able to incorporate into this new work and seeing that evolution of video making. Galaxy Boy like the original film that I made um, on iMovie I made in my sixth grade class my teacher was Miss Echeralde now known as Miss Matarazzo but um, that was my first experience with like video. Like I mentioned to like growing up, I didn't have access to like popular culture, media. And so around that time, like the end of elementary school, middle school, beginning of high school, that was when I, I got my first phone and I was able to explore the internet in secret. Like it was very like not regulated by parents or like it, there, there weren't many ways to regulate it. Yeah, I just started like going on the internet, listening to one of my biggest inspirations, Lady Gaga, around art pop. That's when I started listening to music for the first time. So that was more like end of middle school. But yeah, during that time when when I filmed that film specific that film specifically, I was going through like my parents were getting divorced and I was just like documenting my life at that time. And it was very happy. It, it, it seemed very happy. Um, but obviously, like, it was very interesting, like myself, like, to look back on that and see how I was able to go through ex an experience like that and um, make it seem very happy. And now that I'm thinking about it, there's like a TikTok trend now, where it's like me talking about my trauma or, or something like that. And then me during my trauma, and it's like, them, uh, the person when they're young, and they're like, having the best time, or just like smiling and whatever. Or, I, the one that I saw recently was like, someone doing the the Kylie Jenner lip challenge with the tequila shot, shot, the, or like the uh, shot class. Making that film was fun and it was a fun project. And looking back on it now, so many years later, I think what is beautiful to me is that I, from such a young age, like elementary school, I knew that I had an, an interest in video. I knew I had an interest in visual stuff and, and, and recording and documenting. I mean, when you grow up and like you're told like to enroll in honors classes and AP classes and to excel in so many things and to like do so many activities and stuff. And you're also just told that, oh, you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, all of these things. Like it's really hard to think of your passions, like stuff that you really like to do that aren't those things as something that you can do in your life or like to, to just that the focus in life isn't to like do stuff that you love, it's to do something that might be uh, prestigious or uh, profitable. And again, like my thoughts on profit. So yeah, so in high school, I didn't really get to explore that much either. And only until senior year when I took like a photography class and that was fun. And same thing in college, like I went through the pre-med path. I, I once again thought that I had to like, again, do do this and be, be super profitable and, and just all of these things. And then over the pandemic, I um, sat down and really had time to think about these things and think about like, how, what can I do that feels sustainable for myself? What, what can I do that I really love to do, but doesn't have like, for example, in the pre-med culture, there's this competitiveness and like exceptionalism and like, it feels very disconnected from communities that people are like, that I am trying to serve. Maybe that's also like, because of Harvard and Harvard exceptionalism and whatnot, but 
it just felt very incompatible with what I want to do. Recommitting myself and revisiting Galaxy Boy and seeing this film and, and updating it was something that really fed my soul and like really made me think about like just who like how how a film like this can reach audiences that could feel inspired by me sharing my story and stuff like that and relating this back to another TikTok that I saw recently it was like you grew you grow up to be someone who your younger self would feel comfortable around and that's something that I feel like is really really is relatable because in my work because I think that what the stuff that I'm trying to do is like for people who have gone through similar experiences and and not holding those experiences near near to me or like holding on to them but instead trying to make sense of them and share them in in a way and through the the medium of the visual medium is really um interesting and and like it, I I I have a lot of fun with it and making that film definitely made me realize that this is something that I want to practice more and I'm still practicing something something that I find very inspiring about this time after graduating is like now I can really focus on the real work like the real work of practicing more with filming practicing putting stories together learning from communities and le- learning from actual people not not from communities that exist in this illusion of an institution like Harvard or just like the illusion that exists in college, like that where people are like studying all of these things and, and, and academia studies all of these issues that are so related to the people, so unrelated to the people who are actually doing this investigation or research. I guess those are a little bit of my thoughts on Galaxy Boy and how I feel about this time now and 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 really like feeling like my education and like my development as an artist is only really beginning and i'm really happy with this process favorite quote from like any of their work is um 11 year old hamas saying my favorite hobby is going on the computer it's really fun because same same to this day. Hamas's most recent project, American Dream slash Sergei is Una Bendición, is a multi-part project. It consists of a film. It consists of an art installation, which is a recreation of Hamas's childhood bedroom. And it also includes uh, interviews with Hamas and Hamas's parents, which are packaged in the form of playlists which you can find on soundcloud i think to me when i was like watching your work like galaxy boy and um your most recent one like said gay is una bendicion they seemed like siblings to me um very much Mm -hmm. so you know in galaxy boy like one of my favorite lines is like my favorite hobby is going on the computer i think it was in like the instagram post about um your said gay is una bendicion you talked about like your bedroom and like this project is like a laboratory of identity so like Mm -hmm. i don't know if you want to talk about how like being on the internet and like your bedroom and being able to curate these spaces in real life and digitally, like how that shaped your identity. First of all, I want to agree with you just that the two products are definitely related to one another. And I think that Sergei's and Avendision is a deeper exploration into like the religious trauma. When I think of like what it meant to recreate that space and to make it into a resource for people to experience, experience and, and listen to, And with the albums that were created for it, I think about with the internet, like obviously like for many people, the internet is a way for them to discover, for people to discover their queerness and to engage with a world beyond their immediate um, environment. In my case, like within a religious context, the internet was a way for me to explore queerness um, secretly and for it to happen um, in this kind of like, in this space where I feel comfortable and in in the context of the bedroom and yes the bedroom as a laboratory like even though like the space that was created was just two walls two walls and and an inflatable mattress which was actually what my room was like in a one bedroom apartment just like anywhere you are like where wherever you spend your time wherever your room is like what what makes the room the room is you and it's a, a space a space for exploration and experimentation and engaging with stuff on the internet and and listening to music watching youtube videos once again consuming media and i think also for me like 
since I was socially isolated in this religious institution as a kid. Now in my like teen slash early adult slash adult years, um, I feel like I op operate a lot like a sponge, like because I did not have that like social experience as a kid. Like I feel like now I'm I'm very just very much just like um, absorbing everything around me. And in that time I was absorbing media and music, all types of media and have taken with me all of the stuff that has inspired me and reflecting it in a in a specific way to the world through the stuff that I'm making now. Yeah, also just it coming together to make me and like my identity and picking pieces and for it to come together and creating me. And then another thing that I will say about creating that space is that as someone who hasn't had access to mental health care therapy for much of my life, only in this last year, I really have just been so uh, surprised and like also inspired by the healing process that art provides or creating art provides or just creating in general. I think that being able to take what I had gone through and in the absence of like uh, mental health care and to do something with it to help understand and process and yeah just like to for the what I put in the caption was like I expel this memory and um, for me it was really like I called that memory up and like I brought it into the into existence in this in this space uh, in the Carpenter Center and I like physically like let go of it like obviously that memory holds a lot of emotional deep emotions and being able to have brought it out and like confronted it and like used it to process again what I had gone through and also turn it into a resource and and something that people could listen to and 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 just like learn from and just like a story of a family healing I think was something that I really enjoyed and I think something that I want to explore more in my artwork just like how can in a world where mental health care isn't accessible or like pro provided um, or a right like what processes can we engage in that um, provide healing in my experience like creating has been that experience to process and heal and I hope to, if I if I want to like put out a message into the world to young people or just anyone who feels a certain type of way about stuff that they have gone through, I would say like, if you want to create something, whatever it is, if you want to write in your notes app or paint or cook, or like, I feel like anything that you do and that you make that comes out of love is art and, and cre creating is, a, is an amazing way to heal from these things. One of the highlights of Hamas's work for me, though, is the use of music. Them having fun dancing to this, which is like obviously something I do, something a lot of people do. And it was just like really fun to connect with Hamas through that, that we have similar music tastes. Um, and I'll show y'all one of my favorite clips um, from Sergei Es Una Bendición. Hell no. I feel like TikTok has definitely like uh, change the way that video interacts with um, music and audio. I, I guess in my work, I like to think about like how through this film or like how through this work can I communicate the relationship that I have with this song in a way that communicates something about me that might be relatable to someone. So like hearing you say like, oh, Two Slow Dancers, which is an extremely sad song and carries a lot of memories for me and like I assume for you like um, or just like heavy emotions like like it's very beautiful to see that like just through me like interacting with a song in that way um, I was able to communicate that relationship slash just experience with that song thinking about like the ending of Galaxy Boy with Mary the Night where I'm dancing in my room and I I mean the song is uh, marrying the night marrying all of these things about you the the dark parts of you the 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 not so pretty parts about you along with all the beautiful stuff and I think in the context of um, the film I really enjoyed being able to communicate that relationship to the stuff that I'd gone through through this song that was so um, inspirational to me and formative for me um, to listen to the universality of music is something that makes something like visual a visual medium even more accessible to a larger audience through emotions and and just like relationships too 
to music. I just think that music expands expands the possibilities with with film and and, and in video and like uh, something that I want to work on is and and something that I want to explore more is how can this medium that I mean at school like it's been talked like films that I've watched have been discussed in very academic settings and in very like I don't know from a white lens to be exact like how can we make films or make works that bring in diverse audiences and to com and communicate emotions or topics in accessible ways. Upon graduation, Hamas was awarded a fellowship from the David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies, which they will be using to travel to Colombia and to work on a project that uh, in collaboration with other artists there and to support the work of other artists as well. When I initially proposed it, uh, it was proposed as a documentary, just like just a documentary. So I realized that it's becoming more of like a community project. It isn't necessarily about a finished finish project or a finished film. It's more about the process that I will go through when I go there, the, the community building that will happen when I engage with my family members and with queer artists and community members. And at the same time, just documenting all of all of this intentionally too that's something that I want to work on too it's like how can I intentionally uh, document things in a way feels right for me and feels right for the people who will be participating to, to basically summarize what the project is now is me documenting my time um, and me reflecting on uh, my experience as a first generation Colombian American who is queer who has had the privilege of going to college, the privilege of being born in this country, again, reconnecting with family, honoring generational wisdom, and also identifying parts that can be worked on slash using what I have learned through in my life and about queerness, um, using that information to create a conversation with previous generations to lead to understanding and learning about the history of colonization in Colombia and relationship also to religion and how religion is used as a colonial tool to erase people's personalities and individuality and to erase indigenous and African culture and practices, religions, along with investigating the church that I was raised in. And the part of the project that I am most like looking forward to, and I really feel like part of the funds that I've been given, I have allocated to um, redistributing through uh, to mutual aid efforts while I'm in there in in Colombia, and also to um, young queer artists so that they can make the stuff that they want to make. One project specifically, like to give an example, one of my friends Juan Freyai from Barranquilla um, is a graphic designer. They recently graduated from college over the pandemic, and um, their thesis was this magazine celebrating queer people in Colombia, queer people of color trans women, um, trans people. Um, and since it was over the pandemic, there was no opportunity for the uh, PDF file to be printed out and to be distributed, which was their in initial vision. And I saw it's beautiful and it's, it's, it's very celebratory. It's very uh, funny. It's very like pop culture. Like it, I, I, it's so beautiful. And so being able to supply some funds to them to print it out and make the physical copy of the magazine to distribute is something that I'm really excited to do and I'm really excited for them to just be able to to make make this work come to life. Yeah, so creating a community of queer artists and creating queer spaces while I'm there, I think I think in general it's going to be a very healing ex experience for myself and also with those I come in, into community with. That is the heart of the project, just like for the intention to be love and for community to be at the center of everything and for us to relate to one another and all collaborate on this film or this documentation of this time there in which like all of us are creatives behind this project rather than just like myself. Um, that is the true vision of this project is for it to be really about something that we come together to create and share with the world. Hamas will be documenting this upcoming project through Instagram as they have been doing for their other projects. I was curious as to what that would look like and why Hamas felt 
uh, that they wanted to share their progress and uh, their work online and in digital spaces and what uh, they envision for the future, where they see their work living, where they see themselves presenting the their work from now to the future. I uh, will definitely continue to use Instagram to document my experiences and my process. Instagram was the first social media that I signed up for. So I hold on to it very dearly. I think in terms of engaging with social media, I think that I always want to be very intentional about what I share with this process that I am going on. Instagram definitely is a way for me to communicate the experiences that I'm going through. But I also think, yeah, being selective of what I share and it to be used in a way where, yeah, just in, intentionally and not like an overflow of information or like to reveal too much about what is going on. What I have in mind is for the uh, work that um, will be created by the community to be what really speaks about this process and this time. And like I've mentioned, like, I think there's something really beautiful about documenting and, and choosing to share experiences with the world, specifically like coming from a first generation perspective, like gr growing up in this country, like I, there wasn't much precedent in my family for going through like school or like engaging in American culture. Like really it was just like, it was just like um, my parents and, and um, myself and we just, we were all trying to figure things out in, in our own respective way. Through like a first generation lens, I think there's something really beautiful about their uh, being precedent or there being uh, reflections that are shared by people who have gone through something or have um, have ideas or lessons learned and the, and sharing those experiences and reflections with those who might be seeking guidance where there there isn't much guidance in their vicin immediate vicinity. So um, I think that's what I think documenting uh, why documenting for me is like something that I really enjoy is just I really think about the people who who might not know what to do in a certain situation or people who wish um, they didn't feel alone in a certain experience um, and using documentation as a way to remind um, people that there there have been people who have gone through the similar experience um, and these are their reflections. And do you think like platform, I don't know about matters, but like um, the intention behind platform, I know you said Instagram was like, that was like the first one, but now you know, TikTok is becoming a lot bigger. I don't know uh -huh. what you think about platform, both in the digital space and like, you know, in, in real life, like where do you see your work being shared? I think TikTok is something that I'm trying to experiment with a lot more recently, like just to practice. Um, I think, like I mentioned, like I'm still practicing with all of these forums and I'm taking this time to really think about how to put things together on whether it's like for non-TikTok videos or per TikTok. Definitely, I want to uh, also um, create some sort of similar viewing experience of these works that I'm going to be doing on TikTok so that they can be even more accessible to a large audience and public as well. The, the vision of where this work would be seen is like first and foremost in my home hometown or like my parents, my mom's hometown of Armenia for it to be seen there in a premiere like setting and also here in my hometown of Dover, New Jersey, where people are going through these similar experiences with like religion and navigating a culture that is so uh, different and, and, and um, isolating. And I think w what my vision is, is to like bring more people into the world of film slash nonfiction work. And this is obviously something that I'm still trying to figure out would love to work on is um, making the work that I make as accessible as possible. And like, like you mentioned, TikTok is a very accessible platform now. I think premiering it in um, the, those two cities, towns are really like, I guess the, where, where I'm envisioning where this film would be seen from there, trying to make it as public as possible so that anyone who wants to see it can see it for it to, to um, connect with the community that the communities that I am a part of and um, will be a part of. I think that there is something to be said about um, just like people 
uh, cr creatives like us coming together and, and discussing how can we create something that exists outside of academic institutions and, and something that is widely accessible to the communities that we hold really dear to our heart. While this series is called The Most Interesting People on My Timeline, I asked my interviewees who the most interesting people on their timelines are, and for Hamas, they were lovely enough to send me a long list of people who I believe they interact with mostly through Instagram, and I actually follow a lot of these people, slash know them, slash have interviewed them, slash want to interview them. They're doing really cool things in music, photography, art, activism, a mix of all of that and so much more you can find them listed on the screen linked in the description box and also linked at tanyadoes.com forward slash hamas garavito it's actually such a slay of a list that hamas has provided because you cannot go wrong with checking out anybody who is on it you will be entertained you will be enlightened it is it is just amazing so check them out and thank you again hamas for providing us with who the most interesting people on your timeline are all in all, just Hamas's work really resonated with me. Just as someone who is also first gen, who is pursuing video making and storytelling, who has a presence online and uses that to connect with people, to share my work, and also just that Hamas makes this work where they are so inherently themselves in it and they place themselves into the work um you know there are forms of filmmaking and people who make films where they're not in it they're not the subject of it but it's really unique to be the subject and the observer of your own life and to create art out of that i feel like that's something that um i do as well um and something i admire when people do because you have to kind of nitpick yourself when you're doing that you have to watch yourself back and you don't always look the same as when you are looking at yourself uh, or when you think of yourself in your head you watch and you edit um, yourself from from an observer's perspective that's what you're going to see in Hamas's work and you're going to see Hamas absolutely have fun with that embrace that and heal through that if you want to know more about Hamas, you can follow them on instagram tiktok and vimeo all of which are linked below their tiktok is tomatinto which i learned that tinto is like a little coffee that's what they call a little coffee in colombia and their Vimeo is Hamascara. All of that will be linked in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. Um, it'll also be available at taniadoes.com forward slash Hamascaravito if you want to have those links, if you want to look at more audiovisual material from Hamas, if you want to a uh, written summary of all of this and what we talked about that'll be on that website also make sure to follow me on instagram and tiktok if you want to keep up with this series or keep up with me my instagram and tiktok are both tanya does on my instagram and tiktok you'll also find audio and visual posts that you can share if you really liked this episode if you really like how mrs work and you want to share what they're about you can do that with the posts that i have there just subscribe to this channel to keep up with when new episodes will be coming out which you will because my next episode is with someone that i went to summer camp with who now owns their own luxury fashion brand so stay tuned for next time for next episode if you like this give it a thumbs up all that good jazz most of all i just hope that you share and that you engage with this work because it's called the most interesting people on my timeline for a reason i think these people are so interesting i love their work as you can tell as i've been commenting on it i would not be sharing it if i did not like it if i didn't believe in it and i didn't think that more people should engage with it so thank you so much for listening this was episode one of the most interesting people on my timeline with james garavito Stay connected, stay creating, stay making beautiful things, and I will see y'all in the next episode.